before this video begins, there's a couple parts that had to be blurred out, and that's just because, you know, you can see the um, other things that pop up whenever you're using Cali there. Uh, you can see the other stuff that was typed and things like that, and there was a couple things that were typed on there that were part of uh, exams. So a couple of uh, sub, you're going to see some blurrage, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, and uh, welcome. So we are going to do some uh, pivoting today, right? Um, utilizing chisel, uh, ligolo, ligolo, however you want to call it, and also um, SSH, and lastly, Meterpreter. Well, we'll start with Meterpreter, since that is the, supposedly the easiest one to do, right? So, we'll start off with Meterpreter. As you can see, I already have shell.exe over here. Okay, this is a class on how to make MSF Venom files. All right. Um, so, we already have that over here. Uh, the reverse handlers actually start up on the wrong wrong IP address, though. So, let's go ahead and change that out to set lhost to Ethernet 0. And we'll go ahead and we'll run that again. Okay. And let's go ahead and get a callback through shell.exe, which should make a callback to me, should. There we go. All right, cool. So we get a callback. Who am I? And I am Carrot. Okay, if we have an external, and if we look over here, there's also an internal IP address, 10.10.10.49, and then there's another machine, 10.10.10.48, that has a share on it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at that like real quick. And let's do a control Z. Yes. We're going to say uh, search for shell 2. We will use 0. Um, show options. Sessions. Tag I. Set session to 1. And we'll go ahead and we'll run that. And we do get a interpreter session open. So if I do a session tag I again. We do have our session two opened up. So let's go ahead and do a sessions two. And we'll do something called auto route. Say run auto route. And then we'll give it a subnet right. So attack S. And we can see that this is a 10, 10, 10, uh, 49 with a subnet mask of dot zero. So this is going to be a 10, 10, 10 dot zero network. It's slash 24 network. So say 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 uh, zero slash 24 network, right? Because we know that because it's 255.255.255.0. Alright, we're now um, all running through there. Control Z, yes. And then we're going to search for socks. Okay, we're going to use a socks proxy. So we're going to say use zero. Show options. And we don't need anything else in here, but we do see a server port is on port 1080. Now, if we do a tail on etty proxy chains 4.com, okay, we can see that it is port. 1080 uh, socks 5 which is the version that we're using up here uh, 127001 okay if we go ahead and we type in run we are now running a socks proxy through uh, this machine this IP address into the internal network we can test this now by going somewhere we know what this machine can get to let's say uh, proxy chains SMB client we'll do go to 49 And, oh, share doesn't even exist. My fault. Uh, proxy chains. We'll say nmap. Tac P445. And we'll do that on port 49. Right? And we can see that it is open. Okay. If this was not up and running, it would not be open. Right? Uh, we wouldn't be able to see it. Okay. Um, and if we go ahead and we do an SMB client on port 48. Or IP address on 48 there. That's not going to work because we have to do proxy chains. If I could type proxy chains, there we go. All right, and we'll do put in our password here. And we can see that we can get into it. And from here, we could definitely do a go into the share. If I could log in correctly. All right, and we can get into that share. Okay, so let's go ahead and exit out of here. That is with Meterpreter. 
Uh, just to show now that it's not going to work. Okay, we can't get to it. There's no proxy chains for it, right? Um, we also can't get to it regularly, as you saw before. We're not going to be able to get to it. Okay, so there you go. It doesn't know where it's at. Okay, and since we got rid of that uh, auto route, when we exited out of uh, Metasploit and that interpreter session, we then lost our uh, proxy through here, right? Our socks proxy there. Okay, next, what we're going to do is we are going to do um, was SSH, which is pretty easy. Okay, it's easier to do it from the victim machine than it is on the Kali machine. You may need to enable and start SSH first on the Kali machine. Uh, sudo systemctl enable SSH. I think it's sudo systemctl start SSH or SSH start or something like that. Might be SSH enable SSH start. I forgot exactly how it goes. But um, what we can do for this is we can do an SSH, tag N, tag R, what port we want to go to, right? Which is going to be 1080 because that's what we already have our SOX proxy on. Back on Kali there. Kali at our Kali IP address, which I believe is not 17. Let's go ahead and check like real quick. Yes, it is, dot 17. All right. Put in your Kali IP uh, password. And now again, we can proxy chains into that. There we go. Okay, into that other uh, internal uh, computer there, right? That other internal network. So we can get into that guy again. Okay. Now, if we were to do a proxy chains and map again, we can do that, right? On port 48, we'll say, and there we are. Okay, so we can get there through that also. Now, I, want, I do want to show you something with proxy chains like, real quick. If we do a Rust scan on it, right? Try to look at all ports. Watch how long this takes. Now, remember, these are directly well they're not directly connected but you know it's also not going through a vpn you're not going through uh anything like that so this isn't on you know try hack me or proving grounds or any tests or anything like that this is this is how long it's going to take you okay so if you're using proxy chains and you want to see what ports are available and things like that you have to do an mmap tac p you know let's say 445 uh 139 one, three, five, you know, ports that you know, you know, uh, would most likely be open on the internal of a network. Okay, then from there, 10, 10, 10, 48, and see, does it, uh, is it there or not, right? Okay. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is going to be um, chisel. All right, so I already have chisel on this machine. You saw the beginning, okay. So we already have chisel there. So we'll go ahead and we'll run chisel on here. And to be able to run chisel, what we're gonna do is we are going to type in chisel, period slash, chisel.exe client, go into our IP address on our Kali machine over there, 0 0.17, okay. We'll say port 8000. All right, R socks. When you type in that uh, socks like right there, that'll uh, utilize port 1080 back at our machine. Okay. Um, from here, what we could do is we could go ahead and start up our uh, chisel server. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start up our chisel server. Period slash chisel. All right, server, tat tat port. It's going to be 8,000, tac tac socks 5, reverse, tac tac reverse. Start that up. Now come back over here, hit enter. And you should see a connection. We have uh, something.
and let's use our last one, which is newer, um, as by getting a little bit of momentum throughout the community stuff, and that is Ligolo or Ligolo, however you want to pronounce it. All right, and this one like right here uh, takes a little bit more of a setup. But that's that's okay, right? So let's go ahead and start off on our Linux machine over here, and we're going to utilize uh, peer slash proxy, and we're going to be the proxy. Uh, the other machines are going to be the agent. Okay. Peer slash proxy tax self cert. Okay, we're going to give it our own cert. Okay, and this is going to start to listen on anything going at one one six zero one. Okay. Now. When that happens, all right, or before this even happens, excuse me, we're going to want to go ahead and we are going to want to um, create a new interface. Okay, so we're going to do a sudo ip tunnel tap right here. I already have this up and running, so I'm not going to do it again. But we do this, your username, which is Cali, right? So sudo ip tunnel tap add user Cali mode ton Ligolo okay now when you do that and then when you put in the next command for IP link set Ligolo up okay which is this one right here notice I'm doing both of these on the Linux machine right I'll put that in you do an IF config and you now have this Ligolo interface okay so now you have that interface now we start up our proxy self cert and then from here, we can utilize uh, the agent on the other side. Okay. So we can do a quick peer slash agent dot exe tag connect 192.168.0.17 on port 11601 tag ignore cert. All right. We have to ignore the cert. And we see that we get a new agent joined, right? From here, we can type in session. And we can see that we do have a session, all right? So we have session one, like right now. And from here, we can then um, do an IF config. And we can see that this guy does fall under a 10, 10, 10 slash 24. So dot zero uh, network right there, right? And then from there, we can go ahead and we can do a sudo IP route add and put in that network into our Legolo interface. Okay, so we're going to do a sudo IP route add 10, 10, 10, 0 slash 24 uh, dev Legolo. Okay. There we go. All right, that one already exists because we already, I've already done this before. But uh, you put that guy in there. Lastly, you would type in start in your Legolo session down here. And it'll start tunneling that traffic through. This one creates more of a tunnel. Okay, it doesn't create um, like a SOX proxy type of thing. It's more of a tunnel. Because if we watch now, now if we just do an SMB client, without proxy change, right? Oh. We can now get to it. There's no proxy change there. Also, watch this, because now we're, we're, we have a tunnel now. Oh, look at that rust scan. Okay, we're not doing how, how we were before, right? Where it would have taken forever, it seemed like, to be able to do something, okay? We're going a lot faster with everything now. And like I said, we're not going through uh, proxy chains anymore. We're not going through the stocks proxies. We're going through an actual tunnel now, okay? So we can see that this is a pretty good tool, like right here, to get into an internal network, right? And be able to utilize... Uh, uh, all the different uh, tools as you would normally, right? So that is the different ways of pivoting 
and uh, prox chains, and also utilizing uh, Ligolo, Ligolo. Uh, if someone knows the actual name of it, let me know. But yeah, utilizing that. And whichever one works for you, as it works for you. Um, obviously, the interpreter version you cannot use during uh, OSCP because you would be then utilizing Metasploit for more than one machine because you would be pivoting into other machines with it, right? So technically, you couldn't use it for OSCP, but any of the other ways that I just showed you are perfectly acceptable. So hopefully, you learned something. Hopefully, you learned about some new tools or a new way to pivot. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to you all later.